Has it been a year already? On the 8th of February 2023, Nintendo announced they would be releasing classic Game Boy Advance games as part of the Nintendo Switch Online service. There were a few titles that were announced on stream, but there was one that absolutely blew my pants off. Golden Sun was finally, finally coming to Nintendo Switch. Just not in the way we all wanted. And then time continued on as normal for almost an entire year. And then on a random Thursday on the 11th of January 2024, at the very end of the day, at least for us on the East Coast, Golden Sun was finally announced, dropping January 17th of that same year. And not only that, but The Lost Age, its sequel, was joining it the same day. And the Golden Sun community absolutely f***ing exploded. But Colin, I hear you ask, what is Golden Sun? Isn't it that thing that Julie Andrews sings about in The Sound of Music? Well, yes, you're not wrong. Golden Sun and The Lost Age are a set of JRPGs developed by Camelot Software Planning and published by Nintendo for the Game Boy Advance in 2001 and 2002, respectively. They're known for their incredible story, turn-based combat, and the exploration and combat tools in the form of Synergy, which is elemental magic used by adepts, which are the main race. I'm going to get more into this later when I do an actual retrospective on Golden Sun, but, but trust me, the game explains it better than I am right now. The first game introduces players to Isaac and the Funky Bunch as they set out on a quest to stop the elemental lighthouses from being lit and unleashing their destructive power. The sequel continues the narrative, but this time shifts the perspective to a new group of characters who aim to finish the job of lighting the remaining lighthouses. I've made a ton of short content on Golden Sun in the past, and in the last couple of days, I've seen it just blow up in terms of comments and views and the like. So that got me thinking, what could I provide to new players of this series that has given me so much love over the years that isn't a 23 page script analysis on the entire game? That's coming soon. Anyway, these are 10 of my favorite tips and tricks for playing Golden Sun and Golden Sun The Lost Age as compiled by myself with over two decades of experience and all the fantastic folks over at the Golden Sun subreddit, r slash Golden Sun. Number one, reading is fundamental. If you grew up on Pokemon like I did, then you may be used to your JRPGs telling you that your attacks were super effective or that you hit the enemy's weakness. Golden Sun makes you work a little bit harder for that information. When you attack an enemy, you'll see text telling you the outcome. For example, if it ends in a period, that means the attack was resisted. If it ends in an exclamation point, that means your attack was neutrally effective and if it ends with two exclamation points, that means you hit the enemy's elemental weakness. Keep an eye out for punctuation. Just might save your life. Number two, rainbow kills are absolutely worth aiming for. Following up from punctuation and effectiveness, rainbow kills happen in battle when you defeat an enemy with an offensive gin matching the element that they're weak to named after the rainbow flash that happens when they perish. The benefit of aiming for this super specific method is that you get increased gold and experience drops, as well as better rates for some of the best items in the game. For example, in late game The Lost Age, defeating a Wonderbird nets you about 8,622 experience, but a rainbow kill increases that to 11,208 experience, or about 1.3 times more than before. The item drop rate chance also goes up, from a standard 1 in 128 chance to a 1 in 32 chance. Definitely worth trying out. Number 3. Take it easy. Golden Sun and The Lost Age are two games that together make up an incredible story. And as such, it can be easy to look at them as just something to rush through to reach the end. There will be things that you miss and things that you can't do just yet. Maybe you come back for them later, maybe you don't. That's okay. Take your time in the world of Wayard. Compared to other RPGs, this world is so incredibly vibrant and unique. Towns are packed with people who have tons to say, and you can even read their minds to find out their inner feelings about events that are happening in the world around them. Number four, save often. Okay, this one is pretty self-explanatory, but for the love of God, remember to save your game. Golden Sun is different than almost every other JRPG in that you can save your game literally anywhere you want. There are no save points, 
no goddess statues, no saving and dropping you into the main menu. You got a big boss fight coming up that you're not sure about? Save right in front of it. Reload is needed. No one will judge you for it. Number 5. Take in the ambience. So I know I already touched on this a bit with my third point, but just stop every so often and listen to the soundtrack. Watch the world go by. Explore your surroundings. Matoi Sakuraba composed the soundtrack for both games, and it really pushes the Game Boy Advance speakers to heights that it's never achieved before, or after these games for that matter. Prime examples I can think of are the Elemental Stars theme, the boss fight for Satoros, And then the ending theme for The Lost Age, like, I'm, these are just four that came to the top of my head. There is not a single soundtrack in this game that I dislike. Number six, an emergency lifeline. If you find yourself turned around and lost in a dungeon and aren't sure how to get back to the safety of town, Golden Sun has you covered. When you go to load your save file, press Start and L to be teleported to the last sanctum or town. This can be hugely helpful if you find that your team was unprepared and your stock of items is critically low. Especially if Ivan is dead again. And honest to god, he's Ivan. He's always gonna be Divin. Number 7. Make like the science guy and experiment. The Jin system makes up the core of the class-based level system, and it can be scary at first. Each character does have a base class of their element that can be advanced by stacking Jinny of the same element onto them. For example, Isaac starts as a Squire, which is Venus-based, and he can eventually become a Slayer after equipping 8 Venus Jin. Alternatively, there are also dual and triple element classes that can be found through slapping a character with whatever Ginny seems the most fun at the time. Looking at Isaac again as an example, as a Venus adept, give him 4 Mars Jin and 3 Jupiter Jin, and he becomes a Samurai, who uses synergy from all three elements. And the best part is, there is no wrong answer when it comes to choosing a class. Pick what you want and have fun with it. This isn't Final Fantasy where you're stuck as it forever. You can just do whatever you want all the time. Number 8. Leave no stone unturned, or unlifted. Speaking of synergy, almost every puzzle in the game can be solved with some quick thinking and synergy choice. Sometimes you'll find that you need to use multiple synergy at the same time to solve a puzzle, like using lift to raise a boulder and scoop to dig something out that was buried beneath it. You never know what you'll find, so experiment, push it to the limit, have fun, and if you can't figure it out, talk to the locals in towns nearby. They'll probably have some good insight. Number 9. Go your own way. This one is specifically geared for the Lost Age more than the first game, but I still think it's super neat. There are two fortune tellers in the game that can give you hints on where to find hidden djinn that you may have missed or not found yet, or can give you hints on where to go next in the story. While both games are surprisingly good at turning you around, pointing you in the direction you need to go, and smacking you on the bum, letting you go off on your own, it is nice to know that there's an option for help without trying to read a Neo Seekers forum. Because we've all been there, and we don't want to be there. Number 10. Grinding is never necessary. Okay, again, if you've played any JRPG in your life, you know how easy it can be to feel like grinding past the level obstacle is the best way to become overpowered or force your way past the game's boss or anything like that. In Golden Sun, that's not necessarily the case. Because your stats can change depending on your class and the equipped Jin, the possibilities are endless. You could build everyone incredibly tanky and spam defensive synergy to slowly whittle down your foe's health pool or build for massive damage bursts while leaving yourself weak enough to only take a few hits. I know I sound like a broken record at this point, but play the game your way. There is no wrong way to play Golden Sun. Now, before you say anything, yes, I know this video has been 10 tips and tricks for a game that's over 20 years old from a handheld console that hasn't seen the light of day since its last game, which came to the DS in 2010. But with new players finding these games and having the similar experiences that we all had back in 2001 and 2002, I truly believe it's something that needed to be said. 
Whether you're an OG fan of Golden Sun or brand new to the series, I would absolutely love to hear some of your favorite things down in the comments below. And keep an eye out for the full Golden Sun retrospective coming soon. I'm not kidding when I say that this thing is over 20 pages. The worst part of all of that is that it's only maybe like three pages total where I talk about the game. Now, if you'll excuse me, I'm going to grab my Game Boy and go play Golden Sun the way the good lord intended.